Today's face-off on Fox Soul. Challengers Quan LX and Big Angry Adams ready to go blow by blow on those hot topics. Face-off on Fox Soul starts right now. As we continue to watch the impacts of what has played out over the past several days, um, we continue to see the devastation, right? Looking beyond landfall and looking into places like Asheville, North Carolina. President Biden officially approving major disaster declaration in North Carolina after Helene's catastrophic impacts. We know nearly 40 deaths are confirmed in North Carolina with several more unaccounted for. Over 450,000 still without power. North Carolina Governor Roy Cooper has reported more than 200 people have been rescued from floodwaters so far with thousands more in need of immediate help. Many people are cut off because roads are impassable. They don't have power or communications. People are desperate for help and we are pushing to get it to them. FEMA and the National Guard, they are on the ground at this point and that's across North Carolina to provide that direct assistance and help as many people as they can that have been displaced from their homes. Fox Weather's Robert Ray joining us now from Asheville. This is one of the hardest hit communities, counties in the state and Robert, we know at this point out of North Carolina, at least 30 deaths. And that's reported out of the Asheville area. We know so many more are missing at this point. That desperate search, that desperate confirmation that your loved one is okay is the remaining thing at this point. Yep. What is the latest on those search and rescue efforts? Because we know so much of these communities, especially as you go further into the mountains, have just been completely cut off from everybody else. In this round, here's Charles Big Angry Adams. So, Quanel, the numbers I saw, the latest numbers were at least 120 dead in all states. Helene was a hurricane that seemed to have snuck up on us, right? I was actually in Florida when it hit, but on the far side, on the Atlantic Ocean side at Key Biscayne. And we just had some heavy rain, some wind, but nothing other than just like a hard storm here in Houston. While just three hours away in Tampa, you had destruction. And it, it charted all the way up into uh, these United States, the deep south, and the video we're seeing out of Asheville, North Carolina, is, is agonizing. Uh, we've already had a number of people try to weaponize this for political purposes, which is also agonizing. Yet an uh, instructor at the University of Kentucky tweet that maybe this was God's way of punishing MAGA supporters. Uh, she has already been, it appears she's been taken down from the website, but what an awful person, because of course this suffering doesn't know any, any ideology, it's everyone, and there's plenty of people on the left and the right in North Carolina that are, have had their lives destroyed. You've had the, the climate change mouthpieces already activate to rally around this storm and instead of rallying around how do we get to the people to help them, there are more cries to change the dynamic of the American way of life, uh, pretending that this had never occurred before. In Asheville in 1916, you had a very similar flooding that had uh, horrifying consequences, a lot of death. Uh, this is something that happens around the world, and it has happened here, and it's awful. But I think instead of politics, Quanell. I think it's time we, we get to doing. We saw how little America did after those horrible fires in Hawaii. And by America, I mean the Biden administration for U.S. citizens. And now we had Biden uh, today make a statement that he's done everything he can for North Carolina, which is an absurd statement. They've activated FEMA, but many of the citizens are saying, where's our governor, where's our president? And we do so much for for illegal entrants. We do so much for non-citizens, and yet we do so damn little for American citizens of all races, Quano. Charles, let me say this to you. We can no longer afford as a nation and as a people of the earth to be in denial about the effects of global warming. Global warming is absolutely as dangerous as many of the scientists of weather have declared it to be. Even President Biden and President Obama both said that global warming was in the top three greatest threats to this nation. Now what we're seeing now are the patterns of weather that are hitting us back to back, back to back. Now there's another one forming in the Gulf right now. In fact, there was three at one time just a week ago. Charles, it is true, we gotta do something seriously 
and the government must be on the forefront of it, of doing something to better prepare the American people to deal with these upcoming storms because of changing weather patterns. Now, we did have enough time. You say it snuck up on us. I don't believe it snuck up on OSHA. I don't believe, I don't believe it snuck up on NASA. We got to have better cooperation between these respective agencies and the government of the United States of America can do more. Activate the National Guard, activate the U.S. Army, prepare boatloads of planes and ships with food, water, medical supplies. They can do better. But I also read something that in Florida, the recovery, the recovery fund for disasters had already been depleted because they've been fighting so many hurricanes, one after another after another. Charles, we cannot sit here and deny if you follow any of scripture, if you believe in any degree of the Bible, God did instruct us through the mouths of his prophets that he would use weather as a weapon of war against those who had become so unrighteous that it is time that he deals with them. God ain't gotta drop no bombs, he could just use the weather. Now this professor to say, that that's God's way of punishing the mega supporters. Sit down and shut the hell up. That's dumb as hell. You got over 120 people that have died because of this, including two small babies, one year old babies who were twins and the mother. How in the hell are you going to tell that mother's family, the, the family of those two baby twins, that God did this because of Donald Trump and mega supporters? That professor should not have a job. Okay, it was an instructor, not a professor, but let me, so in one vein, you're talking about God punishing the world with weather for immorality, and on the other hand, you're saying God wouldn't do that. Well, I mean, if you read the Torah, the, the Quran, the Old Testament, it, it describes a pretty vengeful God that does a lot of things that it's, it's, I think, impossible for us to comprehend, but you also talked about global warming. Come on now. It ain't global warming no more. It's climate change. Why? Well, because 40 years ago when we were kids, you know what it was? It was global cooling. And the truth is we are negatively impacting the environment, mostly China and India, but as, as a species we are, but not to the point, the apocalyptic point that so many Western thought leaders are saying it is, because they're saying it as a vehicle to raise taxation. They're saying it as a vehicle to expand control over the lives of everyday Americans. When actual climate change activists, without an agenda of, of, of facilitating their own greed, their own wealth, and then control for the government, are saying, look, hey, it's something serious, but it's not, uh, the apocalypse is not coming like people keep pretending and keep moving the markets like tentpole preachers. I believe more, it will on. take place. But it's not. Through it's global safe. warming, but climate the change, is, there are it will take place. But I don't think, I read one article about two years ago well, the author of that article said that if America changed their lifestyle completely overnight and changed how we use energy because of what's coming out of China and India, that alone could destroy the planet. But here's the thing. That's not the solution. It's telling people, hey, you can't go to your grandmother's house. You can't go on vacation. You got to sleep in at 78 degrees. It ain't happening. In fact, so how do we deal with on. China and we India? We need more energy, not less energy. How do we deal with China and India? Especially in Africa, China and India. We need cleaner energy. We need innovation. Africa we need to take all the, the money that we're sending to the government is to do nothing planet. for nonsense and spend it on scientists developing but clean energy. But the Biden energy. administration should be held accountable for not oh, doing enough for the North Carolina, Florida, Georgia. It's bad right now. Kamala Harris. Liar. What's the first word that pops into your head when you hear Donald Trump? Pure evil. Which one do you think is more selfish? Like selfish, probably her. Kamala Harris? Yeah, because girls are um, a little bit dramatic sometimes. And do you think that people in the United States are ready to have another four years of Donald Trump if he's reelected? No. Why not? Because like, I feel like all he does is like complain and like yell. The researchers found that opinions of the candidates from these 10 and 11 year olds spanned a spectrum as wide as America. In this round, here's Quanell X. 
Charles, we just watched a study that was asking school-age children, looked like they might have been middle school, elementary school children, their opinions about the upcoming election and the two particular individuals, Kamala Harris, well, Kamala Harris, uh, Donald Trump, who's running for election, what was their opinion about both candidates? And gave them a series of questions. When I listen to those young people, those children, give their opinions, and one girl called Trump pure evil, looking at his picture, looking at Donald Trump, I'm looking at Kamala Harris's picture, one child said, liar, etc. You know what that says to me, Charles? It's, that's a fact. That study is a fact that our children are learning to hate at home. That all of our children are learning and taking on the characteristics and behavior and language that they're hearing often repeated in their homes. This nation is so divided today, Charles. It's extremely divided. And when you see our children being poisoned by this current climate, that's going to further divide the future generations also. Because those children, in my opinion, did, don't know enough about Kamala Harris or Donald Trump to formulate their own personal opinion about either one of them. These are things they're hearing from adults. Well, you know, in just the micro shot, the snapshot that we saw, which is just some of them, you, you heard kids express vitriolic hatred for Donald Trump. And the only woman that's uh, the only girl that said something negative about a woman about Kamala Harris, she didn't base it. You could tell she wasn't basing it on any ugliness that she heard from her parents. She just said that girls tend to be mm -hmm. more selfish than boys in her lived dramatic. experience, mm -hmm. right? More dramatic uh, than boys in her lived experience. But it shows you. I don't think it's just the home. I think uh, this is a CNN clip. Uh, Anderson Cooper talking. And, and that says a lot right there, well, what you just the said. the problem is that CNN long ago decided that they were going to draw a false equivalency between Donald Trump and Hitler. Now, I, I've said a bunch of bad things about Donald Trump since he entered the political arena. I'm not a fan. But to suggest that he's the equivalent of Hitler is insane. And in fact, when I hear someone like John Kerry last week give a impassioned speech about a uh, roundtable talk, but he gave us a look about why we need to basically end the First Amendment, end free speech in America to stop, fight the war against disinformation. That is terrifying authoritarianism. That is someone advocating for fascism, to strip free speech from our Bill of Rights, from, uh, and we never hear that from CNN, right? We don't hear it from the journalists that are supposed to be worried about the free press, we don't. We, we just hear this, Donald Trump is evil. And in fact, when you ask people, Julia Louis-Dreyfus, the star of Seinfeld, an outspoken advocate for Kamala Harris, but when pressed on policies, she dodges, right? It's very easy to say, well, Trump she, is Hitler, Trump is evil. But, it's, it, but, how can should, but all Dreyfus, Americans should be talking about policies. But how can Ms. Dreyfus thoroughly address the policies of Kamala Harris when the VP, Ms. Harris, has not done that herself. So it's kind of hard to fight and promote a platform that doesn't even exist right now because the VP has not made it clear what a platform is when it comes to policies. But let's not take it back to children. Instead of telling children, hey, okay, look, there are Republicans who prioritize these issues and feel this way largely about abortion and gay rights and other issues. And then there are Democrats uh, that prioritize, prioritize these issues. And, uh, you know, they, they allegedly. But the hate is about being the taught in the but home. But instead, Charles. they're being taught that by both, not just in the home, but outside the home, by school okay. teachers, by the media. I can agree that, with you on that. that. The but Republicans those children, are evil, but those, Democrats are being But those children are not watching CNN. Those children so are not watching I don't Fox think you News. Give kids enough they're credit. not watching they are. MSNBC. I think they're Those watching children are not watching, watching News Nation. You with me? But what's happening hold is hold on, hold on. They hold may on, come in the room. Quite they may on. come in the room. Hold on one second. One second. Hold on. But they are watching Fox so Thank you, kids, for watching us. Go ahead, Quan. We appreciate you. But Charles, I think they walk into rooms and they get a glimpse of their parents watching 
MSNBC, CNN, Fox News. I used News to watch Nation. that stuff with my and mom. And then watch, and then they watch their parents have opinions about what they're watching, and the children are taking on those opinions and that rhetoric. At the same time, my own daughter, my own daughter, eleven years old, she is really politically opinionated, and she never watches politics with me, but she's getting it in school. These conversations are happening in her elementary school about Donald Trump, Kamala Harris, and how the nation would be. So I asked her, I said, well, you know, who's, when do y'all have these conversations? She said, in the class. Right. I said, uh. And then her friend who was there chimed in. And they all, but they both hated Donald Trump. They are being, this is being taught. Whether you like Trump, disagree with Trump, you don't like him, I don't give a damn about it any of this, to be honest with you. I don't trust Kamala Harris. I don't trust Donald Trump. But I do trust that the American people after November will be the biggest losers, no matter who you are. We deserve better. We need better. But I believe we would start paying serious attention to the fact that our children are being further divided by the political climate in this nation. Well, they're being taught even worse. And we see this with all the violence and all these new mass shootings by people uh, that have they have trans issues and other things and they write a manifesto that is basically, hey, oh, you know, these words are violence where we are equating violence with disagreement. That if you disagree with gender transition at a young age, right, when you disagree with certain things, that that's the equivalent of violence instead of just an ideological disagreement. And we need to get back to but, talking but about gotta politics be and not name calling and screaming. About the poison of hate that's being taught in these homes. Yeah. In today's Face Off Up. Stephen Natasha, Mayor Eric Adams' arraignment lasted less than 20 minutes, but we're just learning that while all this was playing out over here in Brooklyn, investigators were carrying out a raid at the home of Adams' second in command, his top advisor, Ingrid Lewis Martin. Now, Lewis Martin has known Adams for roughly 40 years, and she describes herself as Adams' sister ordained by God. She's also been one of his top aides since 2006. Federal and state investigators were reportedly met Louis Martin at JFK, where she was returning from Japan, according to her. So Eric Adams, no relation, but someone that, you know, he was a police reformist in the 90s. Well, hell, we know y'all not related. He's a black man and you white. I was making a joke, I Quandell. I she was. Go ahead. Okay. So Mayor Adams, also much like me, a former police officer, also much like me, a loud advocate for police reform for a number of years, someone that I have been a fan of has been indicted uh, by the Biden administration. Now he is claiming that it's because he was critical of the border policies that have overwhelmed New York City with costs, and I don't know why. I don't know why they have to give housing and money to people that aren't citizens, but they have. But he's blaming that, and he's saying the head. And then when you look at the fact that, the, that they're indicting him for taking money for helping uh, Turkey put a, a new embassy and do this. And then you, you look at all the money uh, from Burisma that Hunter Biden took from the Ukraine. It all seems like they're picking and choosing Selective. what what corruption. So maybe it was. But then you look deeper. You look at the his girlfriend having a no-show job. He just so clear, uh, second in command. He gave his brother a job. He surrounded himself by his cronies and was criticized for it. And there are some real questions about some real, you know, basically treating the taxpayer monies like they're his but own bank account. But you know how far account. back this goes? It's, yeah, it's pretty awful. This goes back to 2014. Right. Charles, why in the hell are they indicting a man in 2024 for some political financial misdealings or inappropriate, inappropriateness with money from co campaign contributions in 2014 well, now. Maybe, maybe they've just recently nah, discovered No, Charles, it. I'm not buying that lie. So you Let don't me tell you think he's, he's effing up. Let me tell you something, Charles. How can you focus on Eric Adams taking bribes? He got luxury hotel upgrades. They said it's upgrades. Right. He got upgraded to first class and upgraded to fine hotels and fine restaurants. And How I, in the hell are you going to do that and not indict Clarence Thomas? Yeah. How are you going to talk about Eric Adams taking taking money from donors to have an enriched hey. lifestyle and not 
How about our the Supreme president, Court Justice? How about our president Thomas? spending a month at a friend's luxury estate resort exactly. on the beach? How about and here's the thing? Nothing I read. I do have problems with him handing out no-show jobs. Like if his girlfriend had a government job, that's a difference that in the she didn't have to show up or do any work and was just getting a check. Lock him up, right? But. I'll tell you, when you look at all the insider trading, when you look at all the corruption that is so replete throughout our well, political focus system. the resource of the government on this? Here's the thing. I think they are using it. I think the Democrats are worse than the Republicans, but the Republicans are almost as bad. They use, they weaponize lawfare. They ruin people's lives that don't go along. Oh, I with completely agree with that. On. Don't I get completely along agree with that. to go along, right? So what you see is. And I believe that Donald Trump, unfortunately, is a victim of that also. Well, I think Trump created a number of his own problems, but especially in the stop the steal nonsense. But absolutely, like the steel dossier, absolutely fake. We had we had special counsel investigations. We had the Obama administration spying on his campaign with FISA court abuses, far worse. And than nobody Watergate. go to jail. No one cares. Nobody go to jail. Nobody cares. But I mean, I do think we're seeing that the left is limiting access to the press has a war on free speech that the press is ignoring, which boggles my but mind. But you're going to indict this and man for upgrades? Well, he wasn't playing along. He was being critical of the Biden administration. When you read the indictment, it doesn't make a lot of sense yeah. to spend this type of money But here's the thing: to, to investigate this man I and indict him on this. I am all for going after all political corruption. But we, got two, Supreme Court, go but we got two Supreme Court justices the, flying on private planes. I, I get that. Billionaires probably playing. And there are different rules. Eating caviar and drinking oh, Don Perry. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. But dang it, we need to go after all political corruption, not just the people that piss I completely Biden agree. Off. And not the low lying fruit either. That's it for the face off on Fox Soul. We'll catch you next time.